Okay, we're going to revisit here the Pythagorean theorem. What I am showing you here is a triangle that is graphed within the unit circle. So we're going to assume that the radius of the circle is 1, and that's what you're seeing for the hypotenuse here. This horizontal side is called x, the vertical side is y. So if you were to use a Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared. Now, if you were to use some trigonometry here, this angle here, the cosine of that angle is going to be the adjacent side, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. In other words, x. The sine would be the opposite side, y, over 1. In other words, y. So, if you were to substitute that into here, and here, that is the cosine being x, we would have cosine squared. Here you'd have sine squared. We would wind up with this formula. This is called the Pythagorean identity for trigonometry. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. And that is the cosine of an angle squared, not the cosine of the angle and then or rather cosine of the squared angle. So from this, we can actually get two more formulas. If you subtract sine squared from both sides, what you wind up with is a formula just for the cosine squared. These would go away, and what you'd get is the cosine squared equaling to 1 minus the sine squared. Similarly, what if you subtracted the cosine squared from both sides? Then you would have a formula just for the sine squared. Sine squared would equal to 1 minus cosine squared. These two formulas come in quite handy. They are very useful. You may recall in the previous examples, we tried to rewrite the entire expression in terms of just sine and cosine. Well, there will be times when you'll simply want to make this even simpler. In other words, everything in terms of just sine or everything in terms of just cosine. So you would substitute accordingly. It should be noted that you cannot just simply square root both sides like this to give us this. It doesn't work like that. We cannot just simply square root these two components to give us 1 and cosine. We can do that if these weren't being subtracted. If they were, in fact, just one term linked through multiplication or division, that would be appropriate. But this is not a formula that we could use. Let's derive a couple more formulas. What if we took this Pythagorean identity here and divided it by cosine squared? Well, what would happen is this would simply become 1. Sine over cosine is tangent, so you'd wind up with tangent squared this would give you secant squared. That's another formula we can use. Likewise, if you divided the whole thing by sine squared, we'd wind up with yet another formula. So instead of cosine squared dividing in, you divide in sine squared. So we get 1 plus cotan squared theta is equal to cosecant squared. These are your three base formulas for the Pythagorean theorem. This first one here is the one that occurs the most. And it occurs the most mainly because we tend to rewrite expressions in terms of sine and cosine. It should also be noted that just as we did with this first one, subtracting one of the two gives us a different formula. Doing the same thing to this top one here, 1 plus tan squared is equal to secant squared. We get these two formulas here on the right. Minusing 1 gives you tan squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. Minusing the tan squared gives you an equation just for 1. Likewise, for the bottom one, we get two other formulas. Again, I want to note that this first equation that we came up with comes up the most. And these two here also you'll be using interchangeably. The others not as often, and in fact, even if you've forgotten them, you can always get around them by using sine and cosine.
Let's do a proof. Let's say we prove that 1 plus cosine squared minus sine squared is equal to 2 cosine squared. I want you to note that everything is squared, and this is a hint to you that you'll want to consider, consider these identities. Note, you have 1 and you have minus sine squared. You'll want to focus on those mainly because on the right hand side you have cosine squared, so you probably don't want to touch this. However, again, the 1 and the sine squared together gives us cosine squared. Again, the 1 and the negative sine squared become cosine squared, so that's a substitution there. And you'll notice now what we have are like terms. They collect together to give us 2 cosine squared. And as you can see, that finishes the problem. Let's do another. In this particular problem, you have on the left, side, left hand side two terms, the tan squared x and the tan squared times sine squared. Both terms, you'll notice, have a tan squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor it out. That leaves us with this. If you took the tan squared out, this first term would just simply become 1. If you multiply it back, you get tan squared again. This second term, if you multiply the tan squared to it, you'd wind up with tan squared sine squared. At this point, you should recognize one of those identities. The 1 minus sine squared. Do you recall what that equals to? Well, according to our formulas, 1 minus the sine squared is cosine squared. So let's go ahead and put that in. However, you'll notice, remember that on the right-hand side, we want sine squared. And now we don't even have one. So since there isn't a tangent over here either, let's take this tangent here and rewrite that in terms of sine and cosine. Recall that the tangent is the sine over the cosine. And since it's squared, we just simply square them both. So there you have it. You notice here we can get a reduction. And that just leaves us with sine squared. And we have our answer. OK, let's do, let's do another one. Let's prove this fraction on the left is equal to cosine. You'll notice that in this particular case, we have this whole thing here being squared. That does not necessarily mean, though, that we just simply do this. We don't just go 2 and 2. That would work if these were multiplied together, but not by adding. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to FOIL that out. This means you write it out twice, and then just go first, outer, inner, and last. Doing so, and then collecting like terms, what we would wind up with is cosine squared plus sine squared plus 2 cosine sine. Now, whether you go sine times cosine or cosine times sine, they are, in fact, the same thing. So let's go ahead and take this and replace it into the expression. OK, so now you can see what has changed. Now, you might recognize one of your identities. Cosine squared plus sine squared. That's 1, isn't it? So we make that substitution. Now, the only drag in this process is that every time you, you uh, make a substitution, you have to rewrite the entire expression again. Now, you might notice we have a 1 and a negative 1, so those go away. And now it looks like that we can reduce this. You notice that this is all one product, and because of that, it's OK to just simply do this and do this. And notice all we're left with is just the cosine. So that pretty much finishes this problem. Now, a word of caution, a bit of etiquette. If, um, if you're doing a proof, you have to be careful about how many steps you would show uh, every time. For example, Let's go back a bit. Recall back here when we had crossed out the ones. Would it be proper to do this? Cross, cross, oh, I can reduce. Sine, sine, two, two.
and I'm done. The answer is cosine. Unfortunately, that doesn't work as a proof. Remember with a proof, you're, you're trying to justify every single step. The problem with doing all this minusing and then reducing is that we don't know if you reduced first or canceled first. If you reduced first, that means reduce out the twos, for example, that would have been incorrect. Because of that, you had to have included that extra step. Okay, let's do one more. Let's prove that this whole product is equal to 1. I want you to note that we have essentially three terms. This entire term, this entire term, and then this one on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and multiply two of them together. Hopefully you notice that these two are the difference of two squares. And the difference of two squares simply means that you would square the first term and the last term and since it's a difference, you put minus in between. So there we are. Okay, let's go ahead and distribute. We're going to take this cotangent and multiply it to both terms here in the inside. The secant times the cotangent would be the result of the first part. Here, cotangent times 1 is just simply cotangent. And oh yes, by the way, everything is squared. Now, recall that um, in the past we would use this little strategy, and that is this. If you've done everything you can and you're stuck, just go ahead and take everything and convert it to sine and cosine. The secant, you recall, is 1 over the cosine. And since it's squared, that's 1 over the cosine squared. The cotangent squared, then, would be cosine squared over sine squared. And... Um, Let's leave that last part as just cotan squared for now. Okay, we can do some reducing here. Notice that the cosine squareds reduce out, leaving us with 1 over the sine squared, which happens to be cosecant squared. Now, if you were really paying attention, this actually is one of the identities. Cosecant squared minus cotan squared is 1. And that would conclude the problem. Now, what if you didn't recognize that? Uh, cosecant squared minus cotan squared, just a little esoteric, perhaps, for you? Well, there is another way. Let's backtrack a bit to here. Recall we stated that you may want to change uh, the ratios to sine and cosine. Well, we didn't do that for that last one, so let's go ahead and do that now. And, of course, we mustn't forget what we got here. That's 1 over the sine squared. Notice we have two fractions with a common denominator. Let's go ahead and join that together as one big fraction. What that becomes is this top part here, 1 minus cosine squared, would be over sine squared. Hopefully, you recognize this one, 1 minus the cosine squared. That's sine squared, isn't it? And that pretty much finishes the problem, because sine squared over sine squared is 1. And like that, we're all done. Just remember, if you are ever stuck, try and change everything to sine and cosine, and then see if you can get some reductions or cancellations, and also if you can sometimes incorporate the Pythagorean identity. Typically, we can incorporate the Pythagorean identity if we see anything squared, especially the sine and the cosine. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.